Uh, Katie Whiten, uh, also known as Kit, uh, welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you very much for having me. So what's your isolation story, uh, Kit? Are you alone? You're with people? How are you coping? Uh, I am with two. I live in a house in Brunswick with two other women and they're awesome. We all get along really well. Um, and uh, the first few weeks, I think I found really hard. Um, I'm an extrovert and I have um, a really lovely bunch of friends who I'm really missing. But um, yeah, I'm sort of, I'm fine now. I feel weirdly, I think it's kind of given me the time and space to like deal with the things that I maybe hadn't dealt with earlier. Um, and now I'm really liking my own company and I'm like meditating every day and exercising okay. and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm strangely feeling really good now. <laughs> <laughs> so what plans did you have to put aside because of the virus? Um, I had a single launch tour planned for May. Um, so that was going to be the first run of like band shows I've ever done as Kit. Um, so that's that didn't happen. And then just, I guess, um, the single launch date got pushed forward a bit because I just was like, well, I'm not... I'm not promoting a tour anymore. So, um, yeah, I ended up kind of just doing a show in my living room, which was which was cool. Um, and it was really nice to do something. But, yeah, it would have been – I'm looking forward to playing shows again one day. Yeah. How do you find the experience of the live streams? Because uh, you do get feedback, but also you want to concentrate on performing at the same time. Yeah, I think putting the device away from you so that you can see it later – that feels nice to me because then I'm not distracted and I just see, like, if it's far enough away, you can just see the love hearts from Instagram, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, whereas if it's right in front of your face, it's really easy to just want to dive in to the feedback. Um, but it's pretty it's pretty rare to get, like, you know, however many people, 100 people or whatever, giving you their thoughts during the performance because, you know, it's not like – when you have a, a real life, an IRL gig, um, it's not like people come up to you and tell you what they thought. They tell you something that they feel comfortable sharing. But mm. oftentimes when you're doing Instagram or Facebook Live, people are saying things like, oh, this is so beautiful and I love this blah and this this is – like it's, it's a little bit more candid, I guess, mm. um, and people are a little bit more um, honest um, without being subconscious. Yeah, maybe we'll all be like that once this is all over as well. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be a nice development, I think. Yeah. As well as being a solo artist, you're also part of the band All Our Exes uh, um, Live in Texas, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a Roots Americana uh, kind of band. Uh, your new single is quite rocky. I'm just wondering about your musical taste growing up. Who were the artists that, that framed your musical taste? Well, I had um, my mum is a singer. And my dad was a bass player as well. And um, so both my parents were really musical. And um, they actually had very different musical styles. Like my mum listened to folk and jazz, which my dad did as well. He also listened to lots of um, Elton John and, like, yeah, and the Beatles. And, and so I guess that's kind of like my early start. But my mum, I also loved Tina Arena, <laughs> um, but my mum was very into um, the, like, 70s folk um, world. So she loved Janice Ian and Joan Baez and all of those um, women. And I guess then I, I went to uni and did jazz. I loved jazz. Uh, I never really got into rock that much, but I guess, like, I, I went to jazz school. I did a jazz record. I finished that and was like, I want to do pop and did this really sugary EP that I will never, ever show anyone. <laughs> and then moved to Sydney, did, like, a folk thing, a folk EP. Then I did an electronic kind of thing. And then Exodus was kind of folky and lots of harmonies and so I guess it was kind of the rock thing came about because I just wanted to write music that was really fun and that I wanted to hear like that I and I wanted to perform so I guess it was kind of like I fell into it weirdly I think sometimes music for me is a reaction to something else um so going from a folk band and trying to like establish myself as someone different it sort of naturally fell into that yelly 
kind of rock world. Yeah. Uh, the first single, uh, Good Guy, uh, co-written with Ali Barta. Um, what are the songwriting, songwriting skills that Ali brings to the table? Yeah, so Ali and I got together. Um, her publisher was putting her with, with writers, and so we got together. And I think the thing that I really liked about her songwriting was her honest lyrics. She's, she's a big feminist, um, and she is the kind of person who doesn't really let things just go you know what I mean she she'll she'll stand up for what she thinks and tell tell the honest truth which I think is really important in songwriting and she's also really good at writing a melody her melodies are like super catchy but really beautiful and yeah so I guess that's that was where we met and um I love a melody so yeah it was it was great working with her she's She's brilliant and a really nice person, yeah. <laughs> which helps. So the writing was done in the same room together or remotely? Yeah, so we did it together. It was June last year when you could still hang out with other people. Um, and we went to the Native Tongue publishing rooms and just sat down, her and I, with two guitars and notebooks and iPhones to record them. I mean, she and I have kind of talked about this the fact that both of us really like writing without a computer and making it kind of real, which feels really nice. And so that, that was another way we worked really well together. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's pretty rock and track. Was it written on electric guitar? Um, I wrote it with – so I, I usually write on between two guitars. I have, like, an acoustic guitar and an, an electric Um that one, I think I took my electric, So and she had her electric as well, and she's really good at, um, at power chords, and so I think that's kind of where that came from. Um, the arrangement changed a bit from when we wrote it, but, yeah, it was written on electric. Yeah. Um, tell me about your electric guitar. What is it, and uh, what do you like about it? Well, here it is. I've prepared it earlier. <laughs> um, it's an Ibanez. It's quite big for the computer screen but um it's an Ibanez um like hollow body uh it's kind of like a jazz um I think they're called the art series it's kind of like that that sort of sound um it's pretty it's not necessarily the same kind of sound that kit is but it's it was it was the ORX's sound and it's super warm um and it's really really easy to play um it's got a really good action like a really low action, and I like the fact that it sounds quite beautiful acoustically as well. It's not just an electric guitar, so it's good for like touring because you can still write on write on it. Um, I actually got an endorsement from them, so they gave me a really really good deal with this guy. Um, and it's it's nice because I can use it with an amp or not, so it kind of works both ways. Because um, touring with, without an amp is a little easier than touring with an amp. So um, I used to I have a Sans amp pedal as well, so that was kind of doing the same job. Um, but it's got a really warm, full kind of body to it. Yeah. Um, and your acoustic guitar, is, is acoustic guitar your go-to guitar for songwriting? At the moment, yeah, it is. And I have like a um, – I actually had an old maiden that my mum – had when she was young and that's in Queensland at the moment um so I have a Martin it's a little small small kind of triple zero I'll just turn that camera down um and I, I love this guitar this is like a Ray Wiley Hubbard signed it um who is it Hubbard he, I can't remember his last name but I'm pretty sure it is that and he he sings a song called Snake Farm it's very funny he's an amazing I really love his music and he we were in um Austin and we played at a ranch outside South by Southwest and um he actually he signed the bottom of it it's got a crack in it it's got like blood on the inside from (laughs) from a really intense, intense gig it's got nail polish on it it's got dints everywhere it's probably like and as soon as I picked it up in the guitar shop in Brisbane, I was like, that's the one for me. I, I didn't even really play very many. And it's not an expensive guitar. I just totally fell in love with it. Yeah. Uh, do you have much solo material available? Uh, what's the goal in regard to your solo career? Are you aiming for a, an album coming up? or? Yeah, so um, last year in like June, I think, or July, I went to Sydney with my um, couple of friends and 
and we ended up recording seven songs in one day, which was really cool. And there's a few more to record. So I've, I've pretty much got an album's worth of material. I'm sort of just trying to write a bit more over the next few months and um, put some more together so I have a few more to choose from. But, yeah, essentially I have an album's worth of material so a couple more singles this year and maybe one more next and then the album and what about the band or oh, all our exes uh, what are the plans there yeah so we've all been doing our own kind of solo thing which has been really nice i think we all spent so much time as a unit making unit decisions and um it felt really natural for us to kind of go and do our own solo thing um for a little while so i think we're all really keen to make music together again um we're just kind of letting it letting the dust settle, I guess, on years of touring and, and letting ourselves, like, carve out our own little worlds first. Um, but I I feel so grateful to those women and that, that those experiences that we had because um, it was so fun and it happened so easily at the start. So, yeah, I feel very grateful for that. So what's the first thing you're looking forward to when lockdown's over? Oh, my God. I can't even think about it. Um, there's so many things. Um, I think the biggest thing is just being able to be with a group of people together and not worry that I'm going to infect them. Like, that's kind of – there's so much anxiety around, like, touching and, mm. and like, hugging, and that's a real shame to me because I'm such an affectionate person. So um, I'm looking forward to a time when we're all able to just be in the same room and arms around each other and hugs, and um, I think that's kind of what I'm most looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to whatever the first gig is I go to. Um, I feel like it could be the worst music in the world and I will still love it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think the main thing is just feeling connected to other human beings again. That would be so nice. Uh, for people who want to listen or buy Good Guy uh, and learn more about you, what's, where's the best place they can go? Um, I have a website, but also you can go onto Spotify, Good Guys on Spotify. Um, and then uh, I've done, I've got a band camp as well, so you can buy it on my band camp. You can also buy it on iTunes. Um, and there's, I'm a I'm going to put a – I did a cover of Edge of Town last year and I, I put the video up a couple – maybe a week ago and I'm going to put that up as a song you can buy as well on my band camp. Okay, Kit, thanks for spending time with us. Thanks very much, Greg. Nice to meet you. Yeah.